Well, hey everybody out there, welcome back to the channel. It's Chris here from JMNC Games. And thanks for choosing our short explanation of the card game, Happy Little Dinosaurs. Dun, dun, dun. It's the end of the world as we know it, but those dinosaurs feel fine. They are competing to be the one who either makes it through the escape path to avoid disaster, or be the last dinosaur standing. Now, uh, this game is for two to four players. It's for ages eight and up, and the average game time is just about 30 minutes. Now, if you haven't already done so, please take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. We greatly do appreciate that, and it sure does help us grow. And if you feel so inclined, if the video helps you in any way, you can always head over to the app Buy Me A Coffee and you can support us directly. Still looking for our first one. Will you be it? I don't know, come on. Anyhow, now let's dive in and take a look at what's inside the box. There are the player boards, four player markers, one main deck of cards, and one disaster deck of cards. To set up, each player should choose a player board and corresponding player marker. Each player board has different abilities which are located here. More on that in just a minute. It also has your escape route and your disaster area. Collect your corresponding dinosaur and place it at the beginning of the escape path. Any boards or dinosaurs not chosen are returned to the box. Separate the cards into two piles, the main deck and the disaster deck. Shuffle the main deck. Deal five cards to each player. Take the remaining cards and place them in the center of the playing area. A discard pile will be formed to the right. Shuffle the disaster deck and place it face down to the left of the main deck. To the left of the disaster deck will be the active disaster card. Now we're ready to play. To start, flip over the top card of the disaster deck. Read it aloud to everyone. Place it next to the disaster pile face up. Now each player looks at their hand and decides to play a point card from their hand by placing it face down in front of them. If a player does not have any point cards in their hand, they discard their whole hand and draw five new cards. After everyone places a card face down, all players reveal their choices at the same time. The player who has the highest scoring card will win the round. They move their dinosaur along the escape path the number of spaces based on the point card that they have played. The player with the lowest score loses the round and must take the face-up disaster card and add it to their disaster area on their board face up. When a player places a disaster card onto their board, they may also choose to discard one of their cards in their hand in order to hopefully get a better card for a future turn. Now, keep in mind when comparing points, there can be other factors which can cause a player's point value to go up or down depending on dinosaur traits, point card effects, or instant card effects. Before the round is completed, any player who has a disaster card on their board may now move their dinosaur the number of disaster cards that are on their board. Finally, each player draws from the main cards back up to five cards into their hand and return all face-up point cards and instant cards to the discard pile. If you run out of main cards, shuffle the discard pile and reset. Now let's take a closer look at disaster cards. There are three kinds. Natural disaster, predatory, and emotional. Also there is the meteor, which is wild and acts as any of the other disasters, so you don't want these. If a player during the game collects three of the same disaster cards or one of each of the disaster cards, then they are eliminated from the game. Sometimes it's just enough to survive and be the last dinosaur standing, 
as this is another way to win the game. So try to avoid getting too many of those disaster cards. When you look at your dinosaur traits, you will see that each has a different advantage and disadvantage for different types of disasters. You use these numbers to adjust your point total when revealing your point card during the round. Speaking of point cards, they have a value of 0 up to 9. Some are just numbers, and some have additional effects which are listed at the bottom. Players use these effects any time after revealing their card, but before the scoring occurs in the round. Instant cards are used to tip the odds in your favor. Each has their own special benefit, and the card tells you when you are supposed to play it during the round. If there is a tie for the highest point value, then all players sharing the tie would receive the benefit of the win. If there is a tie for the lowest point value, then there is a sudden death. Each tying player plays another point card from their hand to break the tie. If it continues to be a tie until someone runs out of point cards, then the face-up disaster card goes to the bottom of the disaster card deck and you move on to the next round. So remember, draw up to five, reveal the disaster, play a point card, reveal it, winner moves along the path, loser takes the disaster. The first player to reach the end of the path or who survives the longest without being eliminated is the winner. And so that is Happy Little Dinosaurs. Mm. Thanks for joining us today. We sure hope you enjoyed our explanation on Happy Little Dinosaurs. And if you did, if you could give us a like and subscribe, we greatly do appreciate that. And if you got any questions on the game, I know I didn't really run through the, uh, the two-player version of the game. It's mostly the same, but you can always take a look through the instruction booklet to see those differences. But if you're not sure on anything, you can always ask uh, questions down in the comments below, and I'll be sure to answer those as quickly as I can. If you feel like supporting the channel directly, you can head over to the app Buy Me A Coffee, and you can support us there directly. Well, now we know the basics, so let's play.